see what I once was, you could go with me back to where I started from. I know you would see a miracle of love that took me in its sweet embrace and make me what I am today, just an old sinner saved by grace. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. When I took condemned to death, he took my place. Now I live and breathe in freedom with each breath of life I take. Loved and forgave. With the living, I'm just a sinner saved by grace.
Is reminded that you are all these things by the grace of Christ. And let us now drink to that grace that Christ has extended to us. Bring me all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let me join the ask of deacons to come forward. Let us stand as we ask God's blessing. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for life. Thank you for understanding that we may, as a result of your blessing, pass on to one another more. And Father, as we're about to give our tithes and offerings, we ask you to bless it. Grant that it may go to advance your cause so that when you shall come, we will be saved, and to the those who you are working for, we ask in Jesus' name. Please be seated.
the words of scripture from the aged son. Let's turn to our Bibles for scripture reading for today. Hebrews chapter 11, and we are looking at verses 23 to 40. Hebrews chapter 11. I'd ask that you read responsibly. I will lead, and then you will respond with each verse as, as I read it. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 23 through 40. I read, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's command. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians, assaying to do, were drowned. believe not when she had received the signs of Egypt. <laughs> Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of life. And received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. They were sown, they were sown asunder, they were tempted were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Together, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us might have no excuse. Amen. Lord, thy good blessings, O God, have been with us 
Let's take our hymnals while we're going to sing 207. 207. On each other, not on yourselves, but on each other. Uh, today, I'm going to ask that you take special time to pray for each other. Pray for the person who is sick next to you. Pray for the person who you have not seen who used to sit next to you. Pray for the person who used to sit beside you who no longer sits there for whatever reason. We are to pray for each other. If you feel the need to come closer to the altar, now is the time to do so. And if you choose to remain where you are, God hears and you hear me.
bless me again, O Lord. Standing in need of prayer. This little heart that I have needs a big prayer. A deep prayer. This power of mind that I have, Lord, is in need of prayer. These lying lips, Lord, are in need of a touch from the altar to the live coal. Father God, we give you thanks this afternoon for all the goodness you have given to all of us. You have spared our lives to see another day that we are not worthy of. You have provided us food, Lord, where we were hungry, clothing on our backs, shelter over our heads. We often take these things for granted. Yet, Lord, on a daily basis, we do not recognize our ingratitude, but you bless us anyhow. We give you thanks. Father, there are those who came forward. You know their hearts. You know their needs. You know their wants. You know the desires, Lord. And they recognize that you are the only source that can meet them. I ask, Lord, that none will leave here today disappointed, so that you will move through the pews. Move, Lord, through the hearts of each individual. May none who come here, Lord, in need leave here in need. May none of us who came here, Lord, leave the same way we came, but may we be better people, better candidates for the kingdom that you have called to bring. Father, there are those who are here rejoicing. They were sick, and now they are better. We give you thanks. There are those, Lord, who are mourning, and today, Lord, they feel so blessed. We give you thanks. There are those, Lord, who are about to do procedures, and they realize that it is not in the hand of the physician, not in the hands of the experts, but healing, Lord, is from you. And so they come. I ask, Lord, that each desire, each need will be met. And that you will glorify your high and holy name. There are many who bow who take this posture of the globe with us each of this morning. Worshiping your high and holy name. We ask, Lord, that their blessings will not be deficient to ours, but they will have, Lord, the portion that they are there to they are there to keep it. Father, you have called a man for this moment at this time. Lord, we don't know what is in his heart. We don't know, Lord, what is on his mind. So that what we do know, Lord, is not what's in his heart or on his mind that is important, but that what you have to say to us through him. We ask, Lord, that you will hide him behind the shadow of Christ himself and project Christ Jesus crucified. That someone, Lord, who is here seeking salvation will find a Savior and join this great body this great movement that is determined uh, to make it to the kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us thus far. We thank you for the showers of rain in their shoes and the sunshine, Lord, where it's necessary. We thank you for the fresh air we breathe. For, Lord, all that you have done for us yesterday is inadequate to hold us over here today. So we ask that you will renew, Lord, in multiplied fashion a portion. That we, Lord, will be better people today than we were yesterday. And if you lend us life to see tomorrow, may we grow even closer to you then. We thank you for hearing and we thank you for answering prayer. As we ask these blessings in Jesus' name.
here today? Are you blessed to be here today? Well, today God has chosen a man to bless you with a message that you have never heard before. Just the right portion of meal for the need that you have for at this moment. He's a man who is a husband, a father, a Christian, an elder. He's a good man. And this is the reason why God has called him today. So sit back, relax, enjoy the messaging song, as the next voice you will hear is that of our very own Elder Samuel Williams. Hear him.
they can say amen to the prophet, right? They're getting cheeked on Twitter every day. I believe that um, Elder Archer put a little honey in it. You know, the spice is not getting old, but the spice is getting younger and younger, and we have those, um, those two youngsters with us. They sound fantastic. What do you say? Yes. So where could I go? Where could I go? Where could I go but to the Lord? There is no place that we should want to go but to Jesus. What do you say? Amen. Now I title my little discourse. It's not. It wouldn't be too long. But the hail, the hail of faith. The hail of faith. And when I look into Hebrews here, I see a lot of faith. And this week, studying my quarterly lessons, oh dear, I see a lot of faith. And in Hebrews chapter 6, and uh, Hebrews 11, verse 6, see, my glasses started to give me trouble now. I need a new one. Somebody ought to sponsor me, Elder. Hebrews chapter six, chapter eleven, verse six. It says, "Without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He <laughs> is the rewarder of those who do what." Diligently seek him. And then I turn to St. John. No, no, to Luke. I turn to, to Luke. Luke um, 17. And when I look there, I see here that um, I will tell you that he will not bring about justice for them speedily. However, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? My friends, this morning, I don't know what was in Jesus' mind, but this question that we have in Scripture here is a thought provoking question. I don't know what Jesus had in his mind. When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? You see, Jesus tells us in graphic language the things that will take place on the earth at the time of his second advent. Yet it seems uncertain concerning the faith of the people during this tragic time. When we look in the world around us today, we can see that wrong is right. And right became wrong. When we look around us and turn on the television set, all that we can hear, brothers and sisters, is bad news. Man's heart is failing them today for fear for what is coming upon the earth. You see, I suppose that, uh, that I suppose the question arises out of Christ's own mind. The difficulties and the problems and the sin that's going to be in our world today. When you look at what's taking place in the Middle East. Our hearts pain because of what we hear day by day on the television set. When we look in the schools, we see everything going downhill. Teachers telling me that all we have to do is to pray for our children. 
because they cannot manage them. My friends, where are you looking? Are you looking the same place where I am looking? Are you hearing the same things that we are hearing? This is the time when we are supposed as several day Adventist Christians to make our calling on election sure. Are you listening to me? This is the time. I suppose, my friends, Christ recognized that during such days, it will be very, very difficult for individuals to maintain a living faith in the things of God. The situation on earth will be such that faith will just about to fade from the stage of action. How could faith function properly in an atmosphere such as shall be presented on the earth, friends? How shall faith function amidst the race for temporal achievement of this world? Everywhere you turn, you hear somebody robbing somebody. Just the other day, I see on the TV that an old lady, an old lady in a wheelchair. And the young man go and beat her up and pull her off the chair and show all his teeth. Oh, yes, we are in the last days. What do you say? This is the time when we have to pray. What do you say? Yes, Jesus Christ is well aware of that the natural man prefer the present available things which available things of time to those which lie in the unseen future. He is well aware that man's tremendous desire to achieve honor that comes from this life only. How, friends, could faith function in a world today where everybody is so selfish? If a self in the church, we have problems. What do you say? We have problems in the church. We see that brothers and sisters are not really good. We see brothers and sisters don't, don't, the church is not like it used to be when I was growing up. What do you say? What is taking place today? It's because we have too much. We have too much food to eat. What do you say? Yes. Oh, my friend. Someone has posed the question, how can a faith that breathes in the shade of prayer, that survives in a calamity, in the impurity, lives in an atmosphere such as this. My friends, I want to tell you this morning that the faith that Christ is speaking of is a faith that has its residence in the affection of the heart. Do you say? It is a faith that uh, cradle in the conscience and live or die according to the kind of life that you and I live in this world. It is a faith that settles the questions of the authority of the scriptures. My friend, it is a faith that accepts the teaching of Christ and embraces it without compromise to the supremacy and the sufficiency of the word of God. Yes, my friends, it has no, no boundary. This faith that Christ is speaking about has no boundary. It's international. It's worldwide. And Jesus Call upon his disciples, he told them that you, you have a little faith. And today I want to ask us today, how big is your faith? Do you have that strong faith in Jesus Christ? Where are you looking? Are you looking in the right direction, my friends? Are you thinking about the eternity? Very soon from now, Jesus will come. What do you say? Will he find faith in, in Lighthouse? Lighthouse, it seems as if that everything is going downhill. What do you say? But I learned that the gates of hell will not prevail against this church. What do you say? The gates of hell will not prevail against this church. I long to see this church rise and shine like what it used to be. 
I remember the days when I come here, you, you could not get seat nowhere inside here. You have to come early if you want to get a seat. Now look on the church today. What is happening, friends? What is happening to our church? We need to pray. What do you say? Yes. I don't know what, what is in your mind, friends. But Jesus wants us all to keep his church going because he said that the gates of hell shall not prevail against his church. And no doubt that we need to get together and pray for this church. Pray that this church will not languish or die. Pray that this church will come alive in Jesus Christ. This Lighthouse Church can be the best church in this area. It was the best. And it can come back to be the best. But we need to get together. What do you say? We need to love each other. We need to trust each other. We need to throw hands around each other. And we need cooperation, my friends. I believe that we can rise again. Because Jesus wants us to rise again. We are in the last days. And he said, in the last days, perilous time will come. Yes, my friends, without faith, it is impossible for us to do what? To please him. For he that cometh unto him must believe that he will reward us. He is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And Jesus asked this question. When the Son of Man come, will he find faith on the earth? When Jesus comes, will he find faith in you and in me, brethren? When Jesus comes, will you be able to tell him uh, that you, are, you, you give a track to somebody? When last you invited somebody to church? When last you do a Bible study with someone, my friends, it seems as if that the church is going through a cooling off time. What do you say? Before times we used to have tracks here and books here and different things. And, and every Sabbath, somebody receive a track or a book from somebody. When last we give one to somebody? When last we are sleeping? And the Lord said that he's going to spew us out of his mouth. What do you say? Now I'm talking to you heart to heart, brethren. Because it's pain my heart to see how much that we are dying. But the church will continue to go on. Because the gates of hell shall not prevail against this church. This is our church. And we have to keep it alive. What do you say? This is our church. And the Lord is depending upon us to keep his church alive. We got to go on and keep his church alive. Now when we look at what happens to the men of old. They conquered. Armies conquered all in war, my friends. When we look here, we see that Abel. Abel worshipped God. And how he did it? He did it by faith. He not walk with God. And he walked by faith. Yes, my friends, Noah. Noah built the ark. And he did it by faith. They lived by faith and Abraham did it. They governed by faith at Israel. They fought by faith Joshua. They conquered by faith Gideon. They subdued kingdoms by faith David. They closed the, the mouth of the lions by faith, Daniel. And my friends, they, they walk by faith and fight by faith, my friends. By faith, they were all, they, by faith, they were patient in suffering. They were courageous in battle, made strong out of weakness. And were victorious to defeat. My friends, they were more than conquerors. What do you say? 
by faith. And the only, the, oh, and it is only by faith in the all-powerful Jesus that we can come out circle, superior to what is around us, friends. I don't care what's happening and what's going on in your life today. you got to put your trust in Jesus. What do you say? Jesus said, come unto me, all he that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you. And learn of me, for I am meek and low in heart, and you shall find rest into your soul. And I want to tell each one of us this morning, stay in the ship. Never you jump the ship, because if you jump the ship, you know what is outside there. I do not you know, but back home in my country, you got to swim far out to for a shark to bite you. But right here in this country, as soon as you go into the ankle, a shark is holding on on you. So you got to stay in the ship. Don't matter how much that the ship may rock. My friend, stay in the ship because it's the best place to be. Jesus is depending upon each one of us to stay in the ship and to keep on working for him. There will be no starry crown in heaven, friends. So all of us got to get up and start to work for Jesus. What do you say? You got to get up and do your bidding for Jesus. And I don't know, but we have to get some material in this church so that we can work for Jesus. What do you say? Every Sabbath when we are going to leave from here, we're going to leave with tracks that we can give out into the community, that you can give out when you go to the supermarket, that you can invite your neighbors so that they can come and worship with you. Am I speaking the truth? Am I talking the truth? Yes. We need to get alive, come alive in Jesus once more again. I want to see this church grow until it's first again because it used to be that way. But today, we are losing out. We are losing out, friends. I don't want to keep you too long today. But I, 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 I thank God that there are many of us here today are willing to do the work for the Lord. Many of us. But some of us are sleepy. What do you say? And the Bible says that God is going to spew us out of his mouth if we do not get up and rise and shine for him. This is all I want to tell you today. I can tell you I'm not going to keep you long. And may God bless each one of us, we ask for Christ's sake. sing together in number 608. 608. 608. 608.
Lord, your call. Your call to us to rise up as men and women of faith. Those who have gone before went forward in your name. And they were able, Lord, to be valiant for you because they trusted in you. Oh God, we pray that you'll grant us that trust and confidence that with you we can do all things. Remove fear and implant faith so that we all together able, Lord, like your soldiers, soldiers of faith, to be conquerors for your name, we ask for Jesus' name.